so welcome to my channel um, thank you for stopping by I wanted to go through the Arteza 120 set uh, pencil expert edition and first off I want to say if you find this uh, information helpful if you enjoy this please like and follow subscribe to my channel and you will get lots more and also hit the notification bell so that you know whenever I upload more videos that you might like so anyway let's start off um, the case is really nice it's very colorful um, has everything on the back nice little codes you get like 20% off coupon there's helpful tips on here so this is actually really really nice so let's look at what's inside. Okay, so up here we have just about what's you know on the back too. And it also talks about the light fastness, which is also helpful. I love how they have everything kind of mapped out for you, all the pencils that you'll find, and it has them in here as well as down here. So you can look at the pencils and see it as well. So let's see what we've got. Here we are. Let's see what it has on the pencil. Okay, so yeah, the pencil too has like pretty nice writing. Let's see if I can get it up closer. See, it has three stars. You can read it legibly, it's nice. Lots of good colors here. Let's see how many we got. Five different tiers here. These are wonderful, lovely, vibrant colors. We have, oh my goodness, so many browns, so many reds, lots of grays, which grays, even over here, there's grays. So, I mean, there are so many colors. This is wonderful. Um, so far, I would say uh, the color, the color, just the vast colors, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, and then also on top of that, with them being light fast and having the information for you to see on here and as well as on the paper on the pencils themselves uh, that is also very helpful so i've picked out a really fun a really fun tutorial to do it'll be kind of short but it will be fun and it'll be useful okay so here we are i picked out some of my pencils that i want to use i have my little sharpener my little here and I have all of my pencils that I picked out that I thought would potentially be in this now because I'm using Bristol paper um, I'm probably going to pick the closest color rather than layer a bunch of colors just because um, this paper doesn't take a whole lot of extra layers so it does take quite a few but not as many as I like so going for the color that matches closest will be beneficial to us using this color paper or this kind of paper I'm gonna start basing out with something a little bit brighter so let's use some apricot and it doesn't have very good light fastness it has the less the least light fastness which is super helpful to know. Now, if you don't like these squared off tips, if you're using them for the first time, you don't have to keep that. You can just go ahead and sharpen them up if that's what you like, sand it down, um, cut it with an X-Acto, however you sharpen your pencils. So I'm gonna use very light layers. I'm just going to really, really go gentle with this. I don't want to push in the paper. I want to take my time and get a nice, good, even spread of this color. And we'll just work in small sections. So maybe this will be our first section. We won't color the whole thing all at once. Okay. So now let's take our peaches and cream and I'm going to add it just to this area here. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a layer. Now they're pretty close in color, but as they're blending, you can definitely tell that you know it's different, but they're really, really close. And then also with the acorn here, 
you're going to want to try to keep some of these lines. The texture of an acorn is like from the stem to the base. So you want to make sure that you keep the direction of the lines and the direction of this uh, texture. You don't want to just go through and go back and forth like this. You will ruin it. <laughs> or it'll just look really weird and wonky and you won't like how it didn't turn out as realistic as you wanted it to be. Got some fallout here of black. It must have just got on there somehow. I don't know. All right, let's see what else we can add. Let's add a darker brownish color. Let me look through here. Let me go with maybe some burnt ochre. Now go very lightly with this too. Because we're adding a darker color, we don't want to just, you know, go in right away. can even make the texture stand out. We have some spaces in between here and you can make darker areas to make it look like lines that are on your acorn. You can make them closer together, fill out some colors in between and blend those colors all together. Okay. This whole area here is like a lighter color. So let's actually, I'm going to use the peach, or the apricot. And because it's lighter, I'm bringing it across. And don't be afraid to cross over into that other area here. It's not going to hurt it. Remember, this was your base color, so it will blend it. Okay, let's use a little bit of earth red. See what we can do with that. I'm just going to come along the side here. If you hear my kids, they're just playing, they're having a good time. That's kind of the way it goes on my videos. Every time I go to record, I've got children screaming around and playing. Or the husband, he's getting ready to come inside. <laughs> so if you don't know, I actually work out of my kitchen. Um, I have a small art desk. And, I mean, it, it helps me get the job done. That's all that matters, right? Can't wait till everything's perfect to do something. Just jump in. Do what you love. Okay. Let's do a little bit of dark chocolate brown in that. Added at the cap here, just underneath. And 
And then let's add a little bit in here. Now I'm noticing that we might actually have to burnish a little bit. I'm not a big fan of burnishing, but it seems that we might have to force some of these colors together. And I don't know that it's the pencil, but I think it's more likely the paper. The pencils seem very smooth. They are going on very well. They're layering on each other just fine. But I think we need a little bit more of a reddish tone in here. So let's use our earth red again. Let's see how that goes. Let's see what some marmalade orange does. Let's bring some down here. And that's pretty close to the apricot. See if we can use some cinnamon. Now cinnamon is really pushing all them colors together without me having to use a whole lot of pressure and it's getting that nice acorn color, that nice look. So you wanna keep looking at your, your reference photo too definitely watch where all those shiny bits are you don't want to go covering them up because it's easier to add more pigment than it is to take it away i mean there are some tricks that you can take away some pigment but you don't want to have to use them if you don't have to Let's see, let's come up around the edge of this. We have this big shine here and it's already covered up with apricot, but there's a thin line of color. So I'm just gonna use the cinnamon and we're just going to bolden it up a little bit. Bring it up here. Maybe put a really light layer of the cinnamon in here. Just super light and then go back over top of it, maybe with some peaches and cream, just to pink it up a little bit and to blend that cinnamon edge a little bit more. Okay, now let's soften up the edge over here. And what I mean by that is just taking away that really hard line and I'm just going to use small circular motions into where that, that peaches and cream is that we just drew. Okay. So it starts to get darker around the bottom because that is where our shadow is. So let's go ahead and get out our apricot again. We have this already layered. So we're going to come along here and layer the rest of this. 
Now you don't want to do just like hard strokes. We're just doing like circular motions, trying to layer over top of it and get a nice even layer of pigment. Can go over that whole thing. And to transfer, I used actually a um, an orange chalk pencil. Just because I knew that that orange would blend pretty well with the brown. Had I used black, we, we would have had trouble. Um, and if you have used black, you might have trouble um, covering that up or erasing that. Let's see where some of our brighter spots are. Let's use a little bit of the coral. And we're actually gonna come around right in here. It has a little bit more of an orangey kind of pinkish feel. So far, these Arteza pencils are really, really going on well. I really like how they're layering and how they blend with each other. They really do do a very good job. They do remind me, now I did a video not too long ago on the Castle Arts pencils, and I'd say that the Arteza are a little bit closer to the Prismacolor and their texture. So if you're looking for something that is equivalent, I would say that the Arteza are very good so far, and that they are very similar, much more similar than the Castle Art pencils to Creaminess. Because if you've ever used the Prismacolors, they are very creamy, they are very, very nice to lay down on your paper. So I would say that yes, these thus far are very I haven't I haven't seen anything yet now I know with my Prismacolors the there are some pencils that like to chunk on the paper now, I mean chunk as in like like I get these weird like flakes or something I, I don't really know what that is but they kind of like chunk off and then and it, it only happens with certain colors it's not like all the pencils do it and it's only on this paper which is really weird but that's what happens so I struggle like with it would be like skin you know skin tones with the prisma colors because they seem to want to just like chunk up I don't know why it's mostly like the light peach and sienna that likes to kind of get real chunky with each other. It's strange. Go very lightly now over top of that coral that we have down. Blend in these edges. And that is a brighter spot here, so we want to leave that alone. It looks pretty nice. I'm going to come around this edge here. There's like a like a white spot there or something there. It's like a little weird spot on there. 
Okay, and then this is darker on the tip of this acorn. I'm just gonna color that in cinnamon right off the get. Okay. And then there's a, this is a lighter area. I kind of have like a shine going on underneath, which is the reflection of the white table that it's sitting on. So bring it down and it kind of ends, say around where the, this ends here. So shine. And then this looks like it's a bit, maybe a little bit brighter. We'll just go very lightly over it instead of making it really dark. But then this whole area seems to be darker, coming all the way up. Kind of went in at a funky angle there. And that is what you don't want to do. <laughs> It's working out. It looks okay. There's a little bit of a brighter um, area here. We'll just kind of map that out a little wee bit, okay? Just so we don't go over top of it. You might have up here, we might have some issues up there. I mean, it, it looks like a lot of headache there. But I think that it'll be fine. Just take your time. And this gets pretty dark. Now I have my black, but I also have my browns and they have some really nice browns in this set. Like there's a lot of really dark browns, not just like the one or two that you get in other sets of like the dark umber or, you know, we've got chocolate brown, we've got um, cocoa brown, we've got, you know, there's a lot of darker browns. So we might not even need to use our black. So I'm noticing in this area now, I just did that dark, we used the dark chocolate brown. I used it in this area and the cinnamon does not wanna go over top of that that I already have. So I'm just gonna to have to use the dark chocolate brown throughout instead of trying to blend it. And like I said, it could be the paper. It might just be the paper. But I did have trouble with the Prismacolors. Similar issue with only certain colors. They just don't, they don't wanna mix with each other. And I don't know why that is. but it just is. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this actually under here to where, okay, those shadows are. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of this dark chocolate brown. And even though, let's see, maybe we'll go in with the cocoa. Oops, hit my thing. Let's try some cocoa. Cocoa brown, let's see. Let's just add, I'm just gonna go back and forth, sort of adding um, texture, just kind of following the ridges of where the darker areas would be. Let's see if I can add some more up here just to get that color in there. Yeah. 
And I feel like in this area, if we do too much more layering here, it's like, I feel like it's starting to burnish and it just won't take any more layers. So we don't want to overdo it or it's gonna be muddy, but I do need to blend that shadow. So now I have my dark chocolate brown, the one where it's kind of not wanting to blend in with the other colors. And we're just going to pull it down into the acorn a little bit more. So let's use our cinnamon again and let's add some of this lovely color in here. So the acorn is a little bit different in terms of texture. It has small ridges on it, but at the same time it is shiny and looks a bit smooth. So it's kind of a different type of texture, or at least it has a few different textures happening. So you definitely look at what you're doing. And basically this is pretty much just like practice with these pencils to see how they react with each other and to see, you know, if they blend well. I mean, this is part of the um, just, the review process. And just like the other pencils, I feel like um, they would react differently on different papers. So this one, the Ortiz's might not react well on the Bristol paper whereas they might do wonderfully on the pastel mat or a different type of paper. So if you don't like the way it feels on this paper, I guess is what I'm saying, that try it on another paper too. Like a darker shade here. So I'm kind of going through and not really looking at my my picture. I'm kind of just taking some artistic freedom here and allowing my, my mind to kind of fill out where I want it to fill. And I like that woody kind of texture look there. Take the apricot. Let's make that a little bit brighter here. Okay. 
And I'm just gonna use the apricot to brighten up some of these areas that I went over top of. And maybe add this in here to the shiny part. We will even do it on this edge too. Now it says that this is also apricot. I'm just having a hard time seeing that. Looks more of a grayish to me. And I'm using the Colored Pencil Picker app, but if you've followed me at all, I argue with it a lot. So I think I'm gonna add some gray in that. Sometimes I don't even consult it like I just start adding colors. And if you're not there yet, that's fine, you, you will. Let's put a little bit of some earth red in here. Let's use our dark chocolate brown. This is pretty dark in here. And one thing too, I'm gonna say, I haven't had to sharpen these pencils. I mean, I've been using them now for how long? And I haven't had to sharpen them once. They don't seem to eat away very quickly. They seem to hold their shape really well. Let's put a little bit in here. Okay, and then let's actually add, let's add some in here. Now I'll tell you, and I've said this before in some of my other um, tutorials, that you, you could get the colors as close as possible and still have it look real funky if your if your values are off. So adding darker values is so important and to have that contrast to make it look like what you want it to look like, whether it be realistic or not. Like you need to add values, you need to add some colors, some darker colors to make it look right. Okay, that was earth red. Now I have my cinnamon again. And that is blending very nicely. Let's blend out some of these dark chocolates streaks that we have in here. I'm getting a little bit of some tooth showing through, some white tooth but it is slowly blending up and going away. It's starting to look very, very nice. Yes, honey. Can you tell me that Nope. Why? I don't approve of that game. Nope. Mm. Sorry, honey. But this is other than it's kind of fun. Where you have it's like a puzzle. It's a puzzle where you have to get like No, we're not doing that. It has a bunch of ads that are bad. I don't like that one either. Okay. Sorry.
So use your cinnamon, even though this is a lot brighter here, use your cinnamon to soften the edges and to blend that slightly into the rest of the acorn. So we don't wanna make a hard edge on this, but we do want to make it so that it looks like it's there. We don't want it to look unfinished. We don't want it to look like super out of place. You want it to look like it belongs. So just to add that. Oops. I think that's pretty much it on that one. We might end up having to, let's see, let's add a little bit. So I grabbed some cream and I grabbed some stone gray. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna add the cream first to this area. And that is like super nice. So maybe we'll just add it to these areas too, these lighter areas. And it seems to be like blending and covering up that tooth too. So if you have a problem, if you don't like to have that tooth showing, grab that cream and push some of those colors together. I wouldn't push really hard, just, you know, just enough. Let's put some up in here too. And then let's use some of the stone gray. I'm just gonna put it in here. Just give it a different feel there. So now I think I'm actually gonna have to sharpen a pencil, go figure. So cinnamon, maybe. See how they sharpen. Not bad. Let's kind of get some details in here. And we don't want this hard line, so let's just add a little bit of the cinnamon on the edges here, just to break that hard line apart there. We don't want that. It looks cartoony if we do that. We want it to blend nicely. some color inside of this part. I'm really not sure what that is. It's like a defect in the shell. And let's also do the dark chocolate brown. Okay, so let's use our dark chocolate brown and let's start filling in the bottom here. These are the shadows underneath. You got your really dark spot here. And see, I have it real, a heavy line here, but then I am doing a lighter, a lighter line outside, like coming out this way. We're fading it out. Okay. And I am actually going to sharpen my black because It was funny, I, <laughs> you see all the, the numbers and everything and like the names and then you get this and it says N-O-I-R and I just read it as black. So I guess I'm getting used to the names of color pencils in <laughs> different uh, languages, I don't know, it's weird. Okay, so in here you want it to be dark and then you want to gradually get lighter handed. You don't want to make it super dark the whole way. Cuz shadows don't do that. They're underneath they're, you know, directly they are very dark, but then as they progress outward, they are brighter, they're lighter. Okay. So now I have my ash black so I'm just going to very lightly 
add the ash black and it is blending very well with that black. I am very happy about that. Because sometimes they just, you know, you get pencils and you feel like they're gonna just react the way that they're supposed to, and they don't. It's very disappointing when that happens. It seems like the ash black might have like a little bit of brown hue to it. Just a little bit. And then let's, whoops, sorry. Let's use our stone gray. And we're gonna pull that out even more. Let's see how this goes. So this reminds me, the stone gray reminds me of the French gray, like 10% in the Prismacolor set. Just keep an eye on where your shadows are. and get lighter as you go out, you get lighter handed. You don't wanna dig a hard line in there. So go back with your um, ash black and go over top of that stone gray very lightly. I mean, so light, you can barely see it going over top of. I don't want to dig, but I also want to have a nice transition. I don't want to have like black, gray, gray. Like I don't want to be able to see that transition, I guess. And back to the stone gray and blend all those colors together. Okay, so the cap is gonna be a little bit trickier than the rest of it. So we're gonna follow the same um, color scheme. It just has a little bit more of the darker browns in it for the shadows. So grab your apricot. Um, I don't think we'll need peaches and cream. Maybe a little bit of coral. Okay. So each individual piece, you have to think about it as layering like scales. These are going to be on top of this layer and then this layer is gonna be on top of that layer, but it's uh, this layer is under this layer. So let's start um, down here. We'll start on the very lowest layer and it gets blurry and dark down here. And if you do it light enough, you can still keep and see all of your pencil marks. So I'm using small strokes, circular motion here, and just building up this nice layer pigment all the way up. We'll save this part for last. It's blurry and dark anyway. OK. 
Okay. Let's add a little bit of coral into the mix here. And the coral, I think I just want to add it to the tip here and then bring it up around the side and do that with them, with all of them, or at least the ones that are brighter looking. And had to add one there. Don't be afraid to add. So it kind of looks like a hot mess right now, but it'll all come together. No worries. Got some of this color in here. Okay. And then this gets very blurry up here. So I'm just going to kind of add a little bit of this color of coral very loosely. Okay. And because this is a much smaller area than the shell part, I am sharpening my pencils to make sure that they are nice and pointy. This is the earth red. I think I'm just going to go in and map out some of these little scales a little bit better. I'm just very lightly going across them, just kind of mapping out a little bit more of where all these little pieces are so we don't lose those nice spots. get up here it's kind of harder to see because it is um, blurry so we kind of just we create like a suggestive shadow maybe even some texture here So see, I'm kind of making like rounded edges up at the top rather than a straight so that it looks more like round over the top. Okay, let's add our cinnamon. It's just a little bit darker. And the cinnamon um, is going to kind of bring all of this together And then after we add our um, dark chocolate brown, 
that'll really, really make these little scales pop look really nice. So I'm going through and I'm kind of coloring the whole like scale part. Oh boy, the dog just got bathed. He's gonna come out just raising craziness here. If you don't know my dog, his name is Potato. He's 113 pounds, giant black lab mix. He's very big. <laughs> and he's very crazy when he gets a bath. Probably have to let him outside so that he can just like run it off the excitement of being clean and happy. just slowly building this up and getting all these shapes in. This is not so much because um, it's blurry. So I just kind of like made some shapes here. And we'll come back through with our darker. Let's add our dark chocolate brown. And down around these edges, of course, is going to be much, much darker. So you can even start there if you'd like. Kind of covering it up a little bit. It's really dark down here, but I want to keep it this brown color, this darker. Okay, so the important part here now is to find where all these dark layers need to be. So we've got 
I like on the tops and in-betweens. I'm finding this pencil does not want to blend with the others very well. But we'll come back over it with some cinnamon and that will make it that will make it do it. kind of in that weird ugly stage with the cap here so don't freak out <laughs> we're just going to add some of these like shinglies like the flakes kind of and we're just adding a little bit of the value to them and then we'll blend it all out so and this is just really a quick a quick tutorial on how to use these pencils and so far I'd say like they are really really close to the Prismacolor they feel good they are really nice I think I like them a lot better than the Castle Arts I think what's best about them is that they have the stars on them, you know, the plus signs, to tell you the light fastness rating on them. So that is super helpful. A lot of the pencils that I have have that. Um, the more expensive pencils, the Prismacolors do not have that on them, um, but they do make it um, accessible to see what their light fast ratings are on their site and remember this is the blurry part so we're just going to like make shadows basically a suggestion like a loose 
loose shadows here. Let's use, let's use our cinnamon again. I'm gonna get mine sharpened up. Just checking my cores here. Seems like the pencil is taking away quicker than the core, but it's not breaking, so that's good. So I wanna go over these areas now that we colored that is it dark chocolate brown and I want to blend them just a little bit so that they're not so disconnected from the rest of these these parts so we just want to blend them together slowly build those up and come back in with our apricot and lighten up those sides more and blend it some more So I'm leaving some of these areas white and that is simply because I want to come back through with the apricot and blend it further. I am doing it on purpose. Now, on the edges up here, since this is very blurry, very lightly come along these edges and do the loose circles again, but we're not making like a hard line at all. Like we're just, we're just softening those lines there. And if you have a, a soft paintbrush um, you can wipe that away. I wouldn't recommend blowing on it. I know I do that quite often where I touch my paper. Sometimes the papers will pick up oils or if you, you know, blow and you have like wet lips, you know, you can potentially get spit on your paper, um, which is not professional, but that is just, I don't know why I do it, but that is just what I do. <laughs> I just blow on my paper and I tell everybody not to do it, but I'm just saying there is a potential that you, you could potentially spit on your paper and cause problems. Maybe that's why I, you know, I do it. I've never had the issue, but it's it has happened to other people, other artists. Okay, so now I've softened those areas up and I'm actually gonna use cream and I'm going to soften them up even more. Just kind of kind of come in here and blend those around a little bit kind of pull some color around till it gets into into the side there do it here and it seems like it's blurry maybe the whole way down it's about blurry the whole way down so we can actually take the cinnamon and very loosely add it again and then we'll take our cream and we'll do the same thing. But this one, it's not, I'm not using as big of a stroke or I guess a reach with that, um, like we did with this one up here. 
So I'm just going to very gently add that and maybe soften up just to here. And then use your cream and let's make those colors blend with the paper so it looks fuzzy. Yeah, and I like that. So a lot of these areas are even really fuzzy and you don't have to do those, but this is fuzzy down here. So we can even add some fuzziness here and add it to some of these as well. Just break up those lines. If you want it to be fuzzier, break up your lines a little bit. I'm going to come in here and I expect this black that we have down here to kind of get pulled on by the cinnamon and blur this line. So what I mean by pulling is that a lot of times, even with Prismacolor and other pencils, you will get um, color on the tip that you don't mean to or that you do want to. In this case, I want it to happen. If I am working with a black and white animal, or something similar, you know, black and white with like a high contrast. Um, you have to really be careful that you don't like ruin the white with the black because the pencils, especially if they're soft, will pick up that color, the black, and it will bleed into your, your white or where you want it to be like super light. So you just have to watch and sometimes, you know, it can be beneficial. Sometimes it can be what you want it to do. In this case, I am like, yes, I want it to do that. So I'm pushing them into each other and I'm making them um, smear a little bit into each other. But like if I was doing like a white cat and it had some black in it, I would want to be extremely careful with how I, I point my pencil or how, you know, I wanna move through the picture. Okay, so apricot. Let's start pulling some of this color into these. Into these white spaces and all over these darker spots too to blend them so that they're not so prominent. And the apricot seems like it's not like overbearing. It's definitely like a nice subtle color. So I have my black and we're going to kind of look carefully because there's not a whole lot of black, but I do want to separate some of these and give a few deeper tones depending on where it's at. So if you look at your picture, you should be able to see to some degree darker spots. Um, we've got a lot of browns in this area, but then like there's like a stripe like across here where they're, they're a little bit darker. And then of course you have under here, which is quite a bit darker. So you can actually add some layers into that just to darken it up a bit more. And you don't wanna lose this brown either. So I'm just going to gently add some of this in here. And you want to make sure that you do it kind of like rigidly. We don't want a straight line across because in nature it's not like super perfect. So when we look at what we're doing, I'm going to slowly add some crazy not perfect lines here. And 
And then here, since it's blurry, we don't want just like a crazy straight line. So this, we wanna do circles. We wanna keep it in like a general area because this is where that, that shadow is here, but we want to keep it in a circular motion and just sort of make it like that. We, we don't want to make it a line that's a hard line like it is down here, but we'll just slowly build some of this, some of this area up. Okay, this is looking pretty good. And then we have some darker, some darker like shadows up in here and they're blurry. So again, like this, you want to add like suggestive shadows in here so that we don't have hard lines, but we do have something that's telling us that the pattern continues. <laughs> now one thing, I'm not seeing it on here, but I'm also not like super into the white, like down here I was a little bit, but whenever I work with Prismacolors, there's like a greenish or a bluish undertone in the black. Whoops. And sometimes when you're working on like the Bristol, you get like this weird greenish color that comes out. Um, and sometimes it's beneficial. I mean, you know, if you're drawing like a black dog, you know, sometimes you'll find the green in there and it, and it works. But then sometimes when you need it to just be like black, you know, and then it comes out like this weird greenish, <laughs> then you're mad. Then you're like, ah, oh, why? <laughs> why me? Okay, so I'm not going to do all of these. I don't want hard lines on all of these, but I do want some shadow, some value in these parts of the acorn. And we'll come back through too. And this also needs done. And this is very blurry. This is very blurry. So I'll show you how to do that. starting to get a little bit blurrier over here, so we don't want to do too many lines. We just want to sort of add a little bit of some loose circles. And let's see, do we got anything up here? But maybe a little bit. Okay. You know, I think I'm not going to put um, the dark chocolate brown. I'm going to go back in with cinnamon, actually, over top of this black. I feel like we will get a better look. And reason being is that the dark brown is just so dark, but then it with the black is even darker. And I, I want to use that black to blend and make the cinnamon darker rather than making it making the black darker. Make it more like a brown shade than, you know, than a just like a dark brown, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And it is like doing a very good job of it. The cinnamon seems to be a really good mid-tone that is just really blending well with these colors. We'll bring it all the way over because we want to tone down that black. And then of course up here, you want to make sure that you do the circular motions and not hard lines, right? Okay, and I am ready to move up to the stem. 
and I think we're going to go first in with the cinnamon. Let's do a little bit of a light, just a light outline here. And the stem is a lot darker, so, and it's fuzzy. So let's do that. Let's start by creating some fuzzy lines. Loose circles. Now get your, let's use our dark chocolate brown. And if you look, we have a lighter area here and then it starts dark here and then kind of comes up to the rest of this. So make sure you keep the lines loose. You don't want to just go in with a hard line. You just want to slowly build up this darker area. because we have some lighter brown over here. I mean, we have some spots of dark in there, but. It looks like we've got a few little lines right there to kind of separate that. Let's get our cinnamon again. Let's blend out that dark chocolate. Keep making those edges stay fuzzy. Remember it is blurry. And we'll do what we did on the last, on the, um, these ones will take our black and we're going to add it but then we are going to go back over it with the cinnamon that seems to have gone really really well and I really like the way that it looks okay and then back with your back with your cinnamon blend out that black, make a nice cinnamon shade. And then let's use our cream and let's come along the edges here just to pull that fuzzy fuzziness out. Make it a little bit more fuzzy. You can even bring it in here, maybe even get some apricot in there just to tie it all together. I think that looks pretty good. It probably could use a little bit of a darker tone. Of course, make it your own, you know, keep playing with it. Enjoy that process. Have fun with it. And you can tweak however you see fit. So I feel like we're pretty much done. Love how the stem here turned out. There. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you made an awesome piece. I hope that you learned a lot as well. And join me for the next one. If you like this video, please uh, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and also subscribe to my channel. I usually um, put out about one video a month. This has actually been really cool because I've been getting new pencil sets and I'm able to do a quick review and make something with it. So yeah, I enjoyed this and I hope you did too. So we'll see you next month.